Hi friends, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting. If you're new to Christmas lighting this season, one thing that you're bound to run into either this season, next, or sometime in the future is a bad pixel. Okay, bad pixels happen to everyone. It's okay, it's part of the hobby, and troubleshooting it and dealing with it can sometimes be annoying and confusing uh, if you don't know the right steps to take. So in this video, we're gonna teach you exactly that. Let's dive in. So a bad pixel, the first thing we need to do is really define what makes a bad pixel. So I've got a string of pixels here that I was hoping there was a bad one in because this is a string that had epoxy failure all over it. I've got splices in it everywhere. It doesn't, but regardless, if I go on my Falcon F test, this little uh, controller here, basically I can go ahead and do a test pattern just to show you guys. Let it count the pixels first. Do, 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 do. And now I've got these pixels in a red, green, blue test pattern. So a bad pixel can manifest itself in a few ways on a string of pixels like this. Okay, like for example, if we stretch this out, make a mess out of it, you can see obviously we've got our pixels in a line. And pixels, if you're not familiar, if you're new to this, they pass data along and every pixel actually regenerates the data to the next one. Um, so when you see a bad pixel, that means somewhere along your string, say here, there is a pixel that's working, that's still blinking, like here I'm seeing red, green, and blue. And then there's a pixel that's not, and, and then beyond that is not working as well. That's what we would define as one way that you would find a bad pixel, and that is the most common type of bad pixel where there's been some sort of electrical failure in the pixel, whether it be the cabling, whether it be something on the circuit board, doesn't really matter. Now, in terms of how this manifests, for the pixels after the bad pixel, you're gonna see one of two things. If you were running a sequence or running a test mode and that pixel went bad, maybe you wiggled the wires and you know it went bad at that moment, then the pixels downstream beyond that pixel are going to freeze. If you unplug and plug that string of pixels back in, they'll do one of a few things. They may get power but not data, in which case they might turn a color like blue. Sometimes the first pixel will light up and not the rest. Sometimes nothing will happen at all. Okay, so that can be an indicator, a quick troubleshoot of quick. If something looks like it's frozen, unplug it, plug it back in. Do those pixels come on and respond? Do they not? Etc. Okay, that's the first troubleshooting step. Another failure point we might see before we get uh, deeper into it is you might see like here, I'm running a test mode with red, green, and blue. You might have a pixel that is missing a color. So it has red and blue and it doesn't have green. That's gonna be a different type of failure because that's a failure of the LED itself. That's less common, but I've seen it happen. Let's talk about troubleshooting next. And then last, we'll talk about repair, okay? In terms of troubleshooting, once you've identified what you believe is a bad pixel, there's a few steps I like to take, okay? Notice I said there what you believe is a bad pixel. At any point in the game, you might see, you know, your pixel string stop and then some pixels that are off and not responding. That could be a bad pixel, but it also could be something that's gone awry in your configuration, controller settings, smart receivers, etc. And you want to, you know, weed out those other options. What I like to do when my display's up, things are on the house, is just grab a short pixel extension and say I count along my string here and I find that at pixel, you know, 100 or something similar, that's where my pixels have gone bad. First and foremost, if it's at pixel 51, 101, something like that, or if it's the first pixel or the last pixel or two of a prop, the chance of it being a configuration thing is gonna be slightly higher. But you can count by, you know, going off your controller, going, okay, this prop is, you know, 99 pixels, and then there's, you know, five more pixels on the next prop, and then that's the bad pixel, right? That's my first step, is I always, I count where it is in the string of lights, okay? And then I plug that prop directly into a controller output that's controlling at least that many pixels. So if it's 40 pixels in, I look at a prop that's fully working, I unplug that prop from the controller, I plug in the seemingly broken prop. 
because then I know everything else is going to be good and it should be running a sequence or a test mode and that you know configuration is definitely lighting up at least as many pixels as you know to get me past what appears to be bad that'll begin to show you whether it's bad or not testing tools like this is the falcon f test also allow you to set a number of pixels that you want to light up and light those up like here i've got this one set for 1400 so that i can just plug it in know that outside of X lights, FPP, controller configuration, smart receivers, cables, extensions, outside of all that stuff, I can plug in a tester and generate data for X number of pixels and see if it lights up or not. Um, the amount of times that we talk to folks who, you know, go and replace a pixel and then find out that it's a configuration issue, it happens a lot and it's frustrating because you go, you replace a pixel, you use some scotch locks or clickets or, you know, whatever solution you have, and then you realize that wasn't the problem, right? You don't want to do that. So I definitely recommend using something like this F-Test or one of the little Bluetooth pixel testers to just simply light things up in a test mode that's outside of any controllers or anything that has a configuration to it, because that's going to make sure that you're actually sending data to the pixel. Then once you've determined that the pixel is actually bad, you know, you've put it next to a string of pixels that lights up more and they're using the same port. So you, you know, switch ports and you go, okay, this string lights up more pixels. This string only lights up to this number. Then you've identified you had a bad pixel. What do you do to replace it? But we've got a really good video coming in a week or two on clickets and like a big how-to on how to use them. I love clickets, but regardless whether you use a clicket or not, um, and these are clickets, they're the easiest way to splice pixels, save yourself time and frustration, and keep it weatherproof. But the basic guide is, so say we're walking down this line of pixels, okay, one, two, three. Say this is the last one that's lit up, okay? If I'm replacing pixels and it's a typical failure where there's a last one that's lit up and then everything downstream is off, so all these are off, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace starting at the last one that's lit up. So I replace, I cut the wire here, I replace the last one that's lit up and then the one after it, okay, that is not lighting, the first pixel that's not lighting or that's stuck on a static color like a white or a blue or whatever, which can be an indicator that it, that it has power but not data. You always replace two in pretty much any circumstance because you don't know whether the failure is at the pixel that's not lighting up. It could be on the circuit board, it could be at the LED, it could be where the wires meet, but it also could be where the wires leave the previous pixel. And that's why we replace two. Now, if you have a pixel that lights up two colors, but not the third, and you've, again, figured out it's not a controller issue, it's not a data issue or power or something like that, then in that case, you can technically only replace that one pixel because literally that's the LED failing, the electronics are working, they're passing data along, they're lighting up that pixel with everything else, or do like I do whenever most of the time I've run into one like those, and I just leave it alone. <laughs> but you can replace just a single pixel. If you want to replace pixels, it really can be pretty simple. I love these wire cutters for scotch locks. Got them on Amazon, um, many places to get them, and the Click It product from Experience Lights. We carry these, and we're going to have a full review and how-to guide. But basically, you, you cut the wire, you shove it into the Click It. You don't have to separate the wires or anything like that. You punch it down with these pliers. You can even use regular pliers if you need to. Then you do the other side. Are they a little more expensive than scotch locks and other solutions? They totally are, but they are so worth it because when it's you know 30 degrees outside and it sometimes is here in Nashville, Tennessee during display season and it's cold and I got to replace a pixel and it's wet maybe, you know, I want to do the easiest thing possible. I don't really care if it costs a little more. That may or may not be your view, but that's why we love Clickets and why we started carrying them over at Above ABL. Last but not least, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to our channel, head over to learnchristmaslighting.com. We've got a free guide we want to get into your hands. It's the four things I really wish I knew and I should have known before I started in this hobby. It's going to save you time. It's going to save you money. It's going to save you frustration. Then, Make sure whenever you need stuff, you need pixels, extensions, moving heads, head over to our store at aboveavl.com. We're aiming to be your in-stock source for great quality stuff, where you're not waiting for stuff, you're not pre-ordering, you're not back-ordering, you just order it, we send it to you. If that sounds good, head over to our store and check out what we've got in stock this season. We'll see you guys there. Thanks.